Hey everyone, today I'm going to be teaching you how to make your own proportional line following program. So this week's lesson is on proportional line following. Now before you get out your pitchforks and torches and storm my house, yes I did cover this exact same topic two years ago in a previous tutorial uh, from about when I was first starting out with the tutorials. Now the reason why I'm making this video is because I feel like the last video wasn't clear enough in explaining a lot of things and I kept seeing a lot of the same questions come up. So I'm making this video as a standalone replacement for the last one. So without further ado, let's get to the lesson. So before I jump right into telling you how to program your line follower, I need to explain something very important. And this is going to sound very counterintuitive, but your proportional line follower is not going to follow the line at least not directly on top of it. As a matter of fact, you're going to be following slightly to the side of the line. More specifically, your target path is going to be halfway in between the white zone and the black zone to one side of the center of the line. Now, right side or left side doesn't really matter as long as you compensate for which side you're following on in the program. The reason why you follow halfway in between is so when you're on your target path, your robot sees a combined light value that's halfway in between the black and the white. If the light value the robot sees starts becoming too dark, it knows it strayed too far to the left of its target path and needs to turn right. And if it sees a light value that's too light, it knows it strayed too far right and needs to turn left to get onto its target path. So following in between the black and the white gives us this in between value and two separate color zones for the left and the right so the robot can accurately determine which side of the line it's on and how far away it is from its target path. To get your target light value, open up port view and scroll over to the sensor that you're going to be line following with and read its reflected light intensity when you place it halfway over the black and the white zones of the line and whichever light value you get is going to be your target value. Make sure you remember that light value that we just measured because you're about to use it. For the sake of my example, I'll say that I measured a light value of 25%, but of course this is a value that you'll have to measure for yourself, otherwise your line follower won't work. Now making a proportional line follower is actually quite simple, because all you need is a main loop block and four other blocks inside of that in order to line follow. The first thing I want to do is just drag out each of the blocks we'll need and we'll set them up in just a minute after they're all out there. So you need a color sensor block, You'll need two math blocks after your color sensor block. So here's one, and here's two. And you'll need a move steering block. Now that they're all here, let's set them up so we can do some line following. The first thing you'll want to do is set your color sensor to measure reflected light intensity, and make sure that you're selecting the correct port. My color sensor is in port three, so the default works fine for me. You're going to take the output of the color sensor block and make it the A input of your math block. You're going to set this first math block to subtract and in the B input you're going to type in the light value that you just measured. This is your target light value when your color sensor is directly over the black and the white zones halfway. So I said for my example that mine is 25 so we'll type that in. Now the reason why we subtract the target light value is because you kind of want to normalize your readings such, as, such that when your robot is traveling directly over the target path and your robot is where it needs to be, it'll get an adjusted light value of zero. If you go too far to one side, the brighter side of the line, over the white part, you're going to get a value greater than zero and your robot knows to turn in one direction to get back to the target value. And if you start straying in the opposite direction over the black side of the line, you'll get a value less than zero, a negative value, and your robot knows to, to drive in the opposite direction to get back to its target. So that's the reason behind subtracting your light value. This second block is going to be set to multiply, and you're going to take the result of your first math block and make that the A input of your second math block. Now this is where the fun part comes in, and I say fun sarcastically because it's kind of difficult to adjust this, but this multiplication value, your B value, is going to be your proportional constant. And what that does is multiply your turn in order to allow you to adjust how sharp or how smooth your robot's corrections will be. So if you make this B value larger, say 5, your robot's going to have a lot of very sharp corrections and it may be too sharp. If you make this a smaller value, say 0.5, your robot's going to make 
much smoother corrections but this is something you're going to have to adjust on your own by trial and error since this is an arbitrary value I can't necessarily tell you what this value will be because it varies from robot to robot now for Sirius I found that the optimal proportional value is 0 0.6 one additional step that you may need to do here is negate the value depending on which side of the line you're following now in my video I'm going to be following on the right side of the line so I will have to make this value negative however if you're following on the left side of the line you won't have to make this value negative and the reason for that is if you're on the opposite side of the line of course the black and the white side are flipped so you're going to need your robot to turn in opposite directions in order to correct itself back onto its target path and if you put your line follower down on the line and you find that instead of following the line the robots turning off you just may need to negate this value in order to get it to work again so after you have set up your proportional constant the last step is to turn your move steering block to on instead of on for rotations and you're going to take this result and make this your turning factor or steering factor on this block and adjust the power to where you need it now Sirius is the robot I'm using for this demonstration and since it has very tall wheels it moves pretty fast so I think 35 percent is an adequate power level and recall that Sirius needs a negative power level to move forward but this is the negative is going to be dependent on your robot so you can ignore that adjust the power level accordingly and remember if you adjust the power level you may need to readjust your proportional constant so this is the completed proportional line follower program I'm now going to download it onto my robot and we can see how it does I also tried speeding up the line follower and readjusting the proportional value. Keep in mind that this may make your line follower unstable, so slow and steady wins the race in this case. Thanks for watching my tutorial this week. If you found it helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every week. If you have a suggestion for a tutorial, be sure to submit it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.